Hello everybody, welcome to the online component of Printmaking 1. Today we're going to start talking about etching. Now etching is my favorite thing in the whole world. It's what I make most of my art from. It is to me so beautiful, so fun, so unexpected. You always get these you know, happy accidents that happen. You never know how things are going to come out. I just love it. So I hope that you love it too. What is etching? Here is a picture of a copper plate and the etching that was printed from that copper plate. As you can see, they are flipped opposite. So remember, if you're going to be using text, it needs to be flipped. Any words need to be backwards, okay? Okay, so etching requires that there's a chemical. Now engraving is where you carve it by hand using a sharp tool and physical force. So a lot of times people talk about, oh, etching, and they really mean engraving, okay? So etching is the process of putting the metal plate into a vat of a chemical. Now the chemical can be an acid, it can be a corrosive salt, it can be any kind of uh, corrosive chemical that eats away at metal. So let's get started talking about the history of etching. Now, originally, Etching was used in the Middle Ages in Europe to make armor. So they would etch lots of designs into the metal. Now, in order to etch something, what you have to do is paint onto the metal your design, and then you put it, you dip it into the chemical, and it eats away wherever you didn't put your resist. So whatever the resist is, it could be a tar, it could be a wax, for us, it's that hard ground. Do you remember that brown stuff that we painted onto our plates? That's called a resist. So you paint it onto the, your armor, your plate, or whatever in different designs, and then you put it into the acid to etch it. Now, imagine that you are a blacksmith or someone who makes armor, and a knight comes into your, store, to your shop to buy something, and they want to know what designs you can make. Well, nowadays, you would have a catalog. You would have a binder full of photographs. Well, this is way before photography. So how did they show prospective clients what different designs they could do? Well, they would have to take rubbings of the metal. So they would ink them up, take a little piece of paper, hold it next to the armor, and rub it and then peel away the paper and you have the design printed onto the paper. And they would show them, look, this is what my designs can do. I can show you all the examples of what I can do. Now Daniel Hopfer was German, um, a German armor maker and he thought, wait a minute, what if we just make pictures this way? It doesn't have to be armor, it can be anything, right? We can make a flat piece of metal, have a design on it, print it onto paper and we can sell the paper and the paper can be the art. So that's what he did. This is an etching of his and it's from iron plates. So it makes sense that since he was doing iron uh, armor, he's doing armor, uh, iron plates. Now later um, in Italy they developed copper plates but for now they're using iron. Anyway you can tell from looking at this picture that it looks an awful lot like the designs in the armor. It doesn't really have a picture of, you know, a scene or anything. It's more like decoration. Now later they start doing more like scenes of people, animals, stories, flowers, whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the different styles and techniques within this method. So first of all, let's talk about engraving. Engraving is where you just use a tool and you push away the metal. That's it. No chemicals, no resist, nothing. You're just carving directly onto the metal. Here's an example of a detail of an engraving from the Renaissance. Now you can see they got really into cross hatching, they got really into line quality, and they created a whole sense of grays based on black and white lines. So again, this relates to the graphic density we did in our first project. Okay, so that's engraving. Next is etching. With etching, you have to cover the plate in 
hard ground. Do you see this plate, how it has that brown hard ground on it? Now it's slightly lighter than the one that you guys did. That's just because it's a different brand of hard ground, so don't worry about that. But do you see how this artist has drawn away the picture of a bird? Now they've just drawn through the ground enough that the copper is exposed. You can see the copper. You can see the shiny metal. Then you put that into a vat full of the etching chemical and it eats away wherever those lines are. Then what happens is you take it out and you clean off the hard ground. And what you're left with is a plate that has lots of grooves in it, lots of lines carved into it. And then that's how you print from it. Here's an example of the different kinds of lines that you can make on your plate. So the first is a dry point line. A dry point line is like engraving, except for with a different style tool. You see um, A, that picture, that's a burn. It's a tool that used to do engraving. Now to do a dry point, you would use B. See that tool on the bottom? That's an etching needle. That's exactly what you guys all have at home. You use that to do a dry point. But both of those, dry point and engraving, don't involve any chemicals. So what you're doing on your plexiglass is really a dry point. This is a print, an engraving, by Albrecht Durer called Night, Death, and the Devil. And as you can see, it's got lots of very fine detail, lots of textures. And Durer was a master of engraving. Again, no chemicals used at all, just direct carving onto the plate. And he was really a master at it. Now back at this time, in order to become an engraver, you had to take an apprenticeship for seven years. So imagine you're in college, but for seven years, and you're just taking one class the whole time, engraving. It's not even printmaking one, it's just one technique. And they would just study it. And they got so good at it after those seven years that they could then um, be their own master printers. However, etching came around. The thing about etching is the chemical does all the hard work for you. You will see in your dry point plate that you did on the plexiglass plate, or that you will do, that it's a lot harder. Whereas the copper plate, it just glides easily. And then you put it in the chemical and that does the work for you. So it's a lot easier. Here's an example of an etching. Jacolo, the violin player. So when etching came around, the engravers were really mad. They said, wow, it took us seven years to study this and you can just walk right in and make an etching in a day? Like, that's not fair. That's newfangled technology ruining everything. Now, it's kind of funny to think about copper etching being a newfangled technology today because to us it seems very old. However, Things are always changing, and old technologies are always upset about the new technologies coming in. Like, for instance, computers. You know, people um, within the printmaking worlds might not like it that you can just press file print so easy compared to in the past where you had to print everything by hand. But you know, times change and we adapt, and that's that. However, it is really fun to keep using the old methods as well. All right, so as you can see in this image, the lines are all different kinds of lines. Jacques Collot was very important to the history of etching from a technical standpoint because he invented a lot of improvements to the technique, including different ways to make the lines different from each other. So he could make lines be wide, he could make them be thin using different tools. Rembrandt Van Ryan. Um, in the 1600s was extremely, extremely important to the history of etching as well. He gave it a more distinct, um, expressive, and sketchy look. And he also would work on his plates over and over and over again. And he would constantly reprint them in between each time that he worked on it. So in this picture, you can see one on the left that is a lot lighter, that's an earlier state, and then the one on the right where he's put a lot more work into it and it's gotten a lot darker. Here is another example. As you can see, 
On the left is the first one, it's lightest and it gets darker as you go. The last one is a lot more moody, a lot more dark and light and shadow going on in that, and a lot more evocative. So he would get these real emotional responses by just etching and etching and putting a plate back in and out of the acid and keeping on printing it over and over and over again. Here's a famous um, print of his called the Three Crosses. Now he also worked on this plate over and over and over again and printed it many times. Um, at the end of this presentation, in order to be marked present for the day, you're going to be answering a bunch of questions. One of your questions is going to be involving clicking on this link here and um, looking at the images and then answering a question about it. Now let me tell you a little bit about this website. It's got three different prints um, by Rembrandt of the three crosses, all from the same plate but at different stages. And at the bottom you'll see there's a picture, a thumbnail of the entire image and a little yellow rectangle inside. Now with your mouse you can drag it around and you can see all the details in the three prints and compare them to each other and you'll see how they're all like they get darker, they get lighter, sometimes he takes things away, sometimes he covers them up so you can barely see them anymore. So you really get to go into detail and see all the different places that he changed his image. So you'll be doing that at the end. Okay. Um, more techniques became invented, including aqua tint, which was invented in the 1700s. Now aqua means water, tint means color, so watercolor. It was meant to look like a watercolor. So up till now, all we've seen is lines. Now this is a way of getting tones. Um, Francisco Goya was really into it. He did lots of beautiful etchings that involved both lines and tones. This one is called The Sleep of Reason Creates Monsters, and it's from a series called The Caprichos, um, which was a series of prints that criticized Spanish, Spanish um, culture and society at the time. And this piece is about human nature. The sleep of reason, meaning when we become irrational, instead of being rational, when we become irrational, or when reason goes to sleep, then it creates monsters. And these monsters are things like war, strife, ignorance, um, divisions, fighting, that kind of stuff that happens when people become irrational. So that was his critique of human nature. Um, also from an artistic perspective, he really does create a, a giant range of values through his use of line and aqua tint. James McNeil Whistler. Uh, it was very creative in how he wiped his plates. So we haven't really talked yet about how you ink up a plate, but basically what you do is you put ink all over the whole thing and then you wipe it off. And it only stays in the lines and it comes off everywhere else. But he was creative with that and instead of wiping it off properly, he would leave it actually too much ink on purpose. So the bottom of it, of this print, looks kind of like watery and he achieved that because he left too much ink there and he created the effect of water. Edgar Degas was an Impressionist, so now the Impressionists are getting into etching, and you can see it's a completely different style than before. So again, when I said you can do it your own way, like your own style, I mean bring into it whatever kind of style you have, it's great. Um, later you'll see that Abstract Expressionists brought their own style to it. Here's another Degas. Mary Cassatt, another Impressionist. She was really influenced by Japanese prints. This has a look of Japanese printmaking. Her color choices and how she did lots of flat color blocks are very Japanese. Um, as you can see, there's many different plates in it. The other ones you've seen so far have all been black and white. Single plate, as you can see here, there are many different plates. Every single color is a different plate. Another artist who did things his own way with his own style is um, Pablo Picasso. 
As you can see, it looks like his paintings. It's got that abstracted look to it. It's got the thick lines, the thin lines, the textures. Um, he was very into experimenting with process as well. Another artist, Joan Mitchell, abstract expressionist. She did these very abstract paintings that were, you know, um, big brush strokes everywhere, messy, expressing emotions. So she did the same thing with her etchings. Menat Helmi uh, was an Egyptian printmaker, extremely important in Egypt. So just to show you that not all of these artists are uh, European or American, that um, in the Arab world there is also a history and tradition for printmaking, which is exciting. Peter Milton, kind of a more photographic style. Very blurred, soft kind of look. Carl Walker, an American, African-American artist who makes a lot of work about slavery and racism. She does also a lot of cutouts. You know, she actually just physically take paper and cut it. So for her, this etching, she did it in that style of kind of like sharp edges. Whereas the last one we just looked at was more blurry. This one's more like sharp edges. So again, you can get your own drawing style in your copper plate. Jody Bott, an Indian artist. Again, a completely different line quality. And this one also has the color in it. Jenny Schmid, contemporary artist who does things in kind of um, tattoo style. So I know a lot of you guys are into anime, so you can also you know, make etchings in that style. And that would be kind of fun because it would be such a contradiction of, of old and new. So just keep that in mind that you can really bring about your own drawing style. You can mix styles, combine the old, the new, things from all over the world. Maybe bring in some local um, traditional flavor into it as well. Okay, now I'm going to show you there's a bunch of links for videos. And you'll be watching all these videos and answering some questions about them in order to get marked present for today's class. So this first video here, how to make a dry point on plexiglass by Belinda Del Pesco. So this video shows you an artist working on plexiglass, which is what you guys are doing for a little test plate. So you can watch her draw her image, and then you can watch her print it on a printing press, and you'll get an idea of the whole process. This one um, is etching. So using the hard ground, using copper plate, using the ferric chloride, which is the chemical that we use to etch it, this is what we're going to be doing. So this is your other plate, your larger plate. This video is from a movie called Goya's Ghosts from 2006. This movie is about the Spanish artist Francisco Goya. As you remember, he was the artist who did the print called um, With the Sleep of Reason Produces Monsters, right? So in this scene, this is just a link to a YouTube video from one scene of the movie, not the whole movie. In this scene, you'll see them doing the whole etching process from the copper plate to etching it with the chemical to putting it in the printing press to hanging it up to dry. And it's really fun to watch because you'll see that historically it's a little different than how we do it today. A lot less safe, of course, um, but it's still in the same, you know, Pretty much the same, actually. It hasn't changed that much, just safer. Okay, then I have also included a video, how to transfer your image and draw on your copper plate. So Angus Fisher is the artist here, and this is a picture of, uh, this is a video of creating a picture of birds onto a plate, and it's really amazing. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy the detail in this. It's just incredible, so this will be just inspirational for you guys. Okay class, here's what you have to do in order to be marked present for today. On this slide there's a list of questions, so just go ahead and answer all these questions. Upload it to the journal section of Blackboard before 11.59 p.m. today. Okay, here are the questions. Number one, watch Sarah Zay's video and the Goya's Ghosts video. What are three differences between the new and old etching methods? So just give both those videos a watch. 
and see what you notice that's different between the two. What has changed over time? You can just write them out in a list format. They don't have to be complete sentences. Number two, pick an artist you like from the images or videos in the slideshow. What do you like about them and how could it help your artwork? So anyone from this whole slideshow, someone that you liked and discuss how it relates to your work and how it might inspire your work. Okay, three, go to this link and then write down at least three differences that you see between the three prints. So again, they can just be in list format. For example, you could write in the bottom right hand corner, the print on the left is darker while the ones on the right are lighter, something like that. But just drag that rectangle around and explore the prints and discover some differences. Number four, do some online research on etchings. Find an artist whom you like who has made etchings. Why do you like their work? And how does it relate to your work? So it's kind of like question number two, except for now you could pick anyone. They can be from any country, any time period. Just somebody that you really feel a connection to artistically and uh, explain why. So that's all you gotta do for today. Just make sure you upload it and I'll see you next class. Okay, stay healthy and safe everybody.